Hello and welcome to my SharePoint branding and design video blog. My name is Eric Swenson and you can follow me on Twitter at Eric J. Swenson or my blog at ericswenson.blogspot.com. In today's session, we'll be going over the SharePoint 2013 responsive columns and a custom jQuery dropdown to display and hide custom columns on demand. Here is an example of what we're going to create. We have a custom style to the table headers here for the different colors to show examples of all the different columns. We also have a custom jQuery dropdown that displays all the different columns with a checkbox next to them. You'll be able to check off each column and display or hide any column that you choose. Now if I refresh this page, it'll show all the columns again. Now the other thing that we'll show in this example is the responsive uh, CSS used to hide certain columns based on the breakpoints. So if I minimize this browser, and as I scroll, you'll see that certain columns are being hidden. And if I check the columns here, you can see that they're automatically checked off. I've also hidden some other components to make so that the columns display better on the page. So for this example, I hid the whole top header here. Next, I actually hide the left side navigation to give this uh, table a little bit more room. And again, as you get down smaller, I hide certain components. And again, I still have the option of coming in here and showing and hiding certain columns if needed. And as I get down farther, I then, as for like a mobile view, I then hide the top system. So at this point, you have the icon and you have the name. At this point, I could refresh the page, expand open the site, and get all my columns back. So on demand, as you use responsive CSS to reduce the amount of columns, if somebody really needed to see all the columns, they could always come back in here and add them in. It would, however, then add a scroll bar. But it was really up to the user to choose that. To show you an example how the CSS works so that when you reduce the size, certain columns hide, and also the CSS to make the style, I'm going to go into SharePoint Designer. In Designer, I have a custom file under the style library, under a custom folder, and then I have my custom CSS here. Within this CSS file, I set the min width to 0px for the content box. Out of the box SharePoint has a set of a min width so that when the size of the screen gets to a certain point, it will actually keep a scroll bar here so that this content area has a uh, min width of about 400 pixels. We reduced it down to zero so that you can go as small as you can without getting a scroll bar. We then set the styles for the uh, table headers. Here we have the text line left, a certain height, background color, padding, font family, color, and font size. Um, we then have a border right to represent the white um, border, and then we set it so that it's uppercase and it doesn't wrap. This gives you this particular style here. Under the view header, we just set the color for a hyperlink, and then set the cursor to pointer. Then for the, uh, the view headers, uh, for all the table headers, we have unique colors. We use a pseudocode for uh, CSS3 for first child so that we can then represent for each TH, um, it will then have a separate color. So for this example, the first TH has this particular color, the second TH has this one, and so forth. And again, you can keep going as long as um, how many table headers you have. As of right now, I just have a set color for each table header, 
And therefore, when there's more than, let's say, five, uh, one, two, like 12, you'll have a set color. Then as we go down, we start with our um, uh, media queries breakpoints. So for here, I have one set at 1550 px. And what this is going to do is it's going to start hiding certain columns. So it's going to hide the uh, table header and also the first table uh, table data, the TD. So what we're doing is we're hiding the first, uh, the the tenth table header, but also the tenth table data. And what that does is as you reduce it, it actually takes a certain column and just reduces the whole table header and column with it. So it goes over 10 and it, re and it removes that table header and it goes over 10 TDs and removes that table header. So then as we go down, the, we just set the certain breakpoints and we set certain how many uh, table headers and TDs that we're going to remove. So to get the effect that as you reduce, it, certain, it hits certain breakpoints to remove certain columns. And again, we have other CSS to hide certain things like the, the header area here. Here you'll see we're displaying the table row at the width of 1024, um, the width of 1024. Then here, when we hit 950, we remove the left side navigation. And at this point, we set a, a margin left to 20 px. And as you go down, you'll see that we just remove more components and also redu reduce and remove the amount of table headers and table datas. To further describe this process, here's an example of a screenshot of a document library. The columns 1 through 6 represent all the different columns, a check mark, an icon, a name, the ellipsis, the year, and a file size. Within the table header, within this row, this is our table header, known as, and it has a class of MS view header TRTH. The next uh, row is the table data, the TD. This is the MS list view table with TD. To use the first child, what we're going to do is use these classes MS view header TH, first child plus TH. In secondary, where we're going to use the MS list view table TD, first child TD. The TH represents the table headers, the TDs represents the table datas. So as you want, add on additional THs, this really represents the second uh, column. So when you have two THs in here after the first child, you're really representing the second column. And the same for the table datas. The custom jQuery column dropdown was provided from the filament group they have a website here where it shows you an example of their code. As you reduce the size, it hides columns automatically, and then it has a dropdown. I basically took this code and integrated it into SharePoint. Let me show you how that's done. There is also source code on GitHub for this media table jQuery code. You can get it at github.com slash the peg slash media table. I've downloaded the zip from the GitHub and uploaded it into here, into my SharePoint designer, into my custom folder that I created previously for the style sheet. In here, there's a media table.js and also a, a jQuery min uh, reference. If I look at this media table.js, uh, You'll see you'll have the copyright information here, but as they go through, there's a lot of code to define um, what the class name is that is being used and how to wrap, it around, wrap a div around that container. In here, we're actually not going to make any changes. If we go to the master page that I have, under master pages, 
and we go into our custom master page. I made a couple of, couple of references here. The first reference is to this responsive CSS, and we've showed what that was before. Here I have a link to my jQuery and also to this media table. Now what really makes this work is um, this code here, which is uh, when the document is ready, you use the ID or the class name, sorry, the class name for the um, out of the box list views. So if we go into SharePoint, uh, I mean into SharePoint here and do an F12, basically we have a consistent table header class name for all document libraries and list libraries. So you'll see here it's called list view table. As long as I reference that specific class in my code here, the uh, JavaScript ki uh, kicks in and it automatically does it. So actually, if I go into any other list and library in this site, you'll see I always have a columns drop down. So just an out of the box document library. And I've even customized the home page so that I had multiple web parts on here. And again, we still get the responsive CSS that as you reduce, certain things get reduced as well, certain columns. But on here, you'll see that I'll also be able to, on the individual um, web parts, even though they're the same. So this, this has a different view, but on here, I can have a different, um, choose which columns I want on this one, but the same for this one as well. Even though they're the same um, same uh, document library in the back end, you'll see I have three files here, I have three files. All of the functionality still works. The only bugs that I've seen so far is that when you filter, that it automatically removes that column. Now, if you uh, undo that filter, you'll have to re refresh the page and then the columns is back. Um, the other thing that I noticed is that if you had the minimal download strategy enabled on your team site, it also affects the, lo uh, the jQuery loading. So some of the column um, drop downs won't actually uh, be displayed. So those are the things that you need to consider as part of this. So once again, thank you for watching. Um, I'm going to post all of this uh, source code onto my blog at ericswenson.blogspot.com. Thank you.